Welcome to D for Diving's YouTube channel, where today, as part of our Master Diver series, I'm going to take a deep dive into diving with mixed gas. So have you ever wondered how divers are able to explore deeper, stay down longer, or push the boundaries of underwater exploration? And the secret to it is using gases other than air. Now, what we know when we first start diving is that we breathe normal air, which is typically 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. Now, there are some other gases in there like argon and carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, but we'll ignore those because they're trace. 79, 21 is the, the maths that we all typically use. But if you want to be able to push those limits further, then we have to expand ourselves into mixed gas. And in mixed gas, I mean enriched air nitrox, trimix, and heliox. And what are they? What are the benefits? And what are the risks associated with diving those gases? Whether you're a recreational diver or an aspiring techie, this video will give you the lowdown and a solid foundation on mixed gas diving. Let's get started. So as I mentioned, mixed gas involves diving with gases and gas blends other than air. And as I've already said, air is made up of roughly 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. But if we're looking at diving with other blends of gas, we're looking at adding either more oxygen into the blend, and we'll call that nitrox, or we're adding helium into the blend, and we can call that trimix. But let's break them down one by one. First up, nitrox or enriched air nitrox, as we like to call it, E-A-N with an X, small x. This is a mix of gas where we increase the oxygen content at the expense of nitrogen. And we might typically dive with 32 to 40% nitrox for recreational purposes. The increased oxygen content in the gas means that we have two principal benefits. Mm, two, maybe, we'll come on to that. The first of those benefits, obviously, is longer, no decompression limits. By lowering the nitrogen content, lowering the nitrogen absorption, we're allowing ourselves more time that we can spend underwater. The second one that most people report is they feel less fatigued. And I want to take a look at that feeling of less fatigue and explain a little bit about why people might feel a little bit less fatigued. It's believed that because we're diving with a higher oxygen content and we're oxygenating our blood, we feel more rejuvenated and more refreshed after diving a couple of dives on nitrox. But that's not the case. The reality is that divers diving on nitrox typically dive much more conservatively than they would do if they're diving on air. They don't push the limits quite as far. They'll plan their dives, they'll work out what their maximum operating depths are, and because their no decompression limits have been pushed so much further forward, they've given themselves much, much more headroom. And that means that they're less likely to feel the effects of decompression stress. This approach means that from a physiological perspective, you're stressing your body less and therefore you feel less fatigued. But it's about your dive plan, not the gas. And if we were to apply those same conservative factors to diving on air, they'd have the same effect. I've put a quote from Dan on this subject down in the description below. It's really good to be aware of the effects of the different gases that we're breathing, particularly as one as popular as nitrox. But nitrox isn't without its risks. The higher concentration of oxygen means that we start to increase our exposure to the risks of oxygen toxicity, particularly at greater depths. And that's why we have to calculate what our maximum operating depths are for a set partial pressure and ensure that we don't exceed that maximum operating depth. If we're using higher concentrations of oxygen in our equipment, we have to make sure that our equipment is O2 ready or O2 clean. And this is to avoid the risks of fire or explosions. In practical terms though, nitrox is perfect for reef diving, for a little bit of underwater photography or videography, and extend your bottom time without pushing so close to your no decompression limits. But if you're the type of guy that can blow through a tank in under 30 minutes, nitrox is not going to extend your bottom time. Nitrox is not your limiting factor, gas consumption is. And the only way you're really going to be able to extend your bottom time is take more gas. So now let's talk about Trimix. Trimix is typically what a lot more of the technical divers would use. And it's a blend of gas that is oxygen, 
nitrogen, and we now add helium into the mix. Why helium? Well, helium is an inert gas, and so it doesn't affect us from a narcotic effect in the same way as nitrogen would do, or produce the toxicity that oxygen can provide. One of the key parts about helium and practicing using helium is that you can set your END, your equivalent narcotic depth. And that's recognizing that nitrogen produces narcosis and narcosis is bad if you're diving deep and need to make decisions. So we can set the equivalent narcotic effect of the gas we're breathing and fill the balance up with helium or oxygen, depending on how deep we're going. Now, Trimix comes in different blends. There's typically lean Trimix, which has a low oxygen content. This is quite often referred to as hypoxic Trimix because, because it has insufficient oxygen in the blend to sustain life at the surface, and you need to be at depth before you can switch to it. Or you'll have rich Trimix, normoxic Trimix, and this is, has a higher blend of oxygen, one that's more normal, and you can breathe it at the surface and all the way down to your depth. A common blend that we might use is something like 18% oxygen, 35% helium, with the balance being nitrogen, and we'd call that an 1835 mix. But Trimix is not for the casual diver. It requires advanced training, meticulous planning, and of course, specialized equipment. The helium also introduces new challenges into diving, which we need to be cognizant of. It conducts heat a lot faster, which means we run an increased risk of the effects of hypothermia. And it can also cause high pressure nervous syndrome, particularly at extreme depths. As I've said, from a physiological perspective, helium is an inert gas and doesn't produce any narcotic effect but it does increase breathing resistance because it's a very light gas. And it means that you can get a buildup of CO2 in your lungs, hypercapnia, which can be equally just as dangerous. So you've got to be really careful when using Trimix or helium in a blend. Despite these challenges, Trimix is indispensable when it comes to pushing the boundaries further, diving deeper and staying down longer. Now, one of the biggest challenges right now when it comes to Trimix diving is helium is freaking expensive. I mean, off the chart expensive right now. And a weekend's worth of Trimix diving might cost you as much as a small car in just in gas. I'm kidding there, but it, it's, it's a lot. And it's because of the price of helium that we're now starting to see more and more technical divers moving away from open circuit technical diving to closed circuit technical diving because the amount of helium that you'll use is a fraction on closed circuit versus open circuit. And whereas when I first got into closed circuit diving, a lot of people would look at the cost of the unit and the cost of the dive and say it's too expensive. But now with helium being at such a high price, it means that costs differential over time really isn't that much anymore. And finally, we have a different gas, Heliox. What is Heliox? Well, Heliox is literally just a mixture of helium and oxygen. It eliminates nitrogen completely from the gas. This is typically used by commercial divers or saturation divers because they're diving at extreme depths for extreme amounts of time. And we really cannot afford for any narcotic impact to come into it. They're, they might be welding or construction work. They, they can't be drunk down there. And of course, with no nitrogen in the loop, you significantly reduce any decompression obligations that you might have. However, Heliox also has its own limitations. It's like a yin yang. You get a benefit, but you get an equal negative. The lack of nitrogen means that divers don't have an alert mechanism before HPNS might kick in. And typically, when diving on Trimix, you'll experience the narcotic effect of the nitrogen before the HPNS will affect you. And so it's a nice little warning that, that lets you know that the next step, if we keep going, is that I'm in big trouble. On Heliox, you don't have that warning. Additionally, with helium's thermal conductivity, hypothermia becomes much more of a risk and temperature management is a must. And you may have seen on movies where you've got your oil rig divers having warm water piped down to them from the surface. That's entirely for this purpose. In cold water, in a cold environment, they need to be flushed out with warm water because of the helium. Physiologically, Heliox also has another big factor to it. It can cause voice distortion. Yes, you're gonna sound a little bit like Donald Duck. 
Hey, Nick. Oh, hey, Nick. Is there any helium in this? Do I have any helium in mine, or what do you think? You two are an embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> and it requires specialized communication equipment, particularly for the oil rig workers and commercial divers, to take that into consideration and make you understood. It's also, as with Trimix, really expensive, which puts it beyond the realm of most recreational or technical divers. So how do you choose the right gas for you? It all comes down to depth, duration, and the purpose of the dive. If you're looking at diving on a relatively shallow reef and you just want to provide yourself with more opportunity, more redundancy, and better margin for safety, then Nitrox is a clear winner. If you're wanting to push the limits a little bit deeper and be able to stay down for more than a nanosecond, then Trimix is a really good gas to breathe and an introduction to Trimix is a very good positive step. Heliox, of course, as I said, it's out there, but it really is for the world of saturation and commercial diving. But as we've said, diving mixed gases does not come without its own set of risks and challenges. And it's really important that you as a diver know exactly what you're breathing and what its limitations are. So it's imperative that you always, always analyze your gas. Now, if you're just diving nitrox, an oxygen analyzer is critical. But if you're moving into Heliox or Trimix, then you need to be also be able to analyze the helium content of the gas too, so that you know with the three gases that you're breathing exactly what your limitations are. And if you've ever seen technical divers diving, they'll normally have a sticker across the top of their tank. And on that, they'll write what the contents of the tank are as per their analysis. And also then, what are the limitations? You'll see MOD with a depth. You'll see a, a, a duration. You'll see an END perhaps, which is what its equivalent narcotic depth is. And this is just so that other people within that technical diving team can ensure that we've all tested our equipment and we know exactly what our limitations are. So mixed gas diving opens up a whole world of adventure that we can dive into. Whether that's exploring reefs for longer, checking out and penetrating a beautiful wreck, doing some cave diving, and just enjoying some deep sea environments. But it's not something to take lightly. And I highly, highly recommend if you're thinking about going down this route, that you take some additional technical diving training, whether that's through an agency like IANTD, TDI, GUI, there's a lot of them out there. Find an instructor that you connect with, that can explain things the way that you can better understand and appreciate, and that you enjoy their company, and go and have some fun learning some more technical aspects to diving. If you found this video at all helpful, I hope you did, and you got this far, then please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get notifications of when we have new content going out, and hit the thumbs up button, as that will really help us understand whether this is the type of content you guys want to watch. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was informative, and I hope you got something from it. It was good fun researching and thinking about the different gases and scripting a video like this. If you've got any questions about mixed gas diving, drop them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer any of those questions. Remember, the ocean is full of wonders, but explore it responsibly. Thanks very much. See you soon.